it's that time of year, you know, to make Christmas stuff. We kind of skip Thanksgiving. But you know how that goes. Well, this year, I don't think we're having Thanksgiving because I don't think there's any turkeys left in Texas. <laughs> Did you all ever hear, that, you know, turkeys look up when it rains yeah. and drown? Well, there can't be any turkeys from Beaumont to Corpus Christi then. <laughs> they would all be underwater. Okay, I'm going to make a Christmas tree ornament. And if you've never done one of these this way, you use the greenest wood you can find, which is fun to turn because it's like turning butter. So, see if we can get this thing to work. I think I had it going on. Oh, there we go. That gets it. Has anybody done any Christmas ornaments yet? Do you prefer any particular kind of wood? There was a question about that. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. <laughs> it's something that came out of my backyard. I cut off Saturday. I think it's, I think it's China Berry, because it had the bearings on it. And you know, to make a Christmas tree, all you got to do is make an ice cream cone. That's what you got. But look at Greenwood. Look at, oh, you can feel it. <laughs> it smell, what, does it smell like China Berry? <laughs> I don't know. It smells kind of sweet. Maybe it's something else. It might be persimmon. But, uh, I'm using branches, not really a whole tree trunk. These are just branches because... And what I'm going to do is not anything new. Of course, if you've been in wood turning very long, you know, nobody's really invented anything. Everything's been out there for umpteen jillion years. And the first time I saw anybody do a Christmas tree like this was actually at a spring, well, I don't know what it was, some kind of demonstration they had that the wood turning club in Greenville was doing for spring green or something, and they were just there, and there was one guy doing these little things and I said hey that's pretty neat and then later I found out it was nothing new people had been doing it in Germany for no telling how many years but they were using a special tool they were using a, a skew that was it was modified where it kind of had a hook on it okay so we're getting close to something like a Christmas tree an ice cream cone Look at those ribbons coming off. Oh my gosh. I'd almost pay money to do this. <laughs> I mean, that's fun. And I'll probably do it a couple more times, too. Okay. This is the guy that showed me how to do this. He said, you need to use this tool. It's a high-speed steel and this really neat handle that came from Highland Woodworking in Georgia. But really all it is is a glorified flat blade screwdriver. If you got a flat blade screwdriver, you can... If you hold it there on the, on the turning, and I'll go from overhead then. Okay. And it's just really a flat blade screwdriver. There we go. See? Something you can buy at a garage sale somewhere. And to make you... Did he make, I know some of you came out here and looked at my Christmas tree. What we're making is a fuzzy Christmas tree. So we're going to put a curl in the wood here. You just put the point straight in there. Lift it up a little bit. And it makes a neat little curl. And then when you get through, you can paint it. But I will show you one little problem it has before you paint it. And I'm just moving just a little bit above the curl each time. Not much angle on it, just kind of going straight in and pushing forward. And if you screw it up, you can always start over. Boy, wasn't that hard? So, let's say we screwed it up.
and I have not been able to tell. I've tried this on some dry wood. It doesn't work quite as well. And the guy who told me, he said he always used it on wet wood. I know you don't want to see me just sit here and go zzz, 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 zzz. But now then, you know, you can actually keep going down a little bit more and leave a little nub on there. Make you a little ornament at the top of the tree. You know, how fancy do you want to get? We'll go straight in and then just push. And just push on a little bit and then it makes that curl come off. And like I said, if you get too much of it, you can do it with a skew too, but y'all know how a skew does. Sometimes you put it on there and it goes this way or that way. At least it does with me sometimes. Huh? Part? I'm, I'm using the bottom. Yeah, I'm just pushing it straight in, letting it make a line on there, and then just pushing, just going straight in that way. Yep, it's the bottom of the tip. Just the. But you know what? You get home, take you some wet wood, or even take some dry wood, and just play with it. And see, there we go. But the thing that happens to it sometimes is look. You can knock most of it off till you paint it. But it does leave, can you see it on there? It does leave the fringe on there. A lot of it will come off, but there's still a lot left there. So, try one more time. And I could not tell any difference in changing the angle of the ice cream cone. You know, making it, you know, elongated or uh, short that would just be how did you want to do it oh but those things are fun they're still wet and let's see somebody just, and somebody just brought a whole load of green mesquite out there Look at that if we want to. There we go. Okay, I'm using, like I said, the, I can't see, but the bottom of it is going straight in. And I'm just making a line, then I push up just a little bit. And it'll, it'll force that curl right out. Uh, this one just has a square. It's just square. So put it down, but I don't, you know, I'm not doing it this way. I'm doing it that way. But it, it doesn't take a whole lot. Now I'm not pushing it in. I'm pushing it up this way. And it curls it pretty fast. So you, you can see how long it takes. It doesn't take very long. Anyway. And this is one that was done in dry wood, you can see. I believe it was maple, so it still makes the fuzzy on it. This is one I painted, and see, it's still pretty good. And then you can paint it different. This is what I try, I try to paint it black and then frosting it with some white. But, I don't know. Let's see, I need to put it that way, don't I? So you can see. So you can make some Christmas trees. And I was thinking of making a bowl off-center and put like three trees around the edges and, you know, put M&Ms in it or something. Something for kids. And here's some other ones I've made that we're playing with. So... You know, that, that's delayed just a little bit, isn't it? So you can see kind of what they're like. This one, one's kind of fat, one's kind of tall. And you can make them swoop or you can make them fat just like Christmas trees, however they do. Okay, for my next trick. Yeah, 
Uh, these are not too bad. Let's see, none of those have cracked. They might eventually, but you know, if they make it through Christmas, I figure that's okay. <laughs> you know. And I know, I'm using a Tommy Bar Chuck. Oh my gosh. I kind of like my Tommy Bar Chuck, so. Uh, okay. Sure. Here, let me pass a couple of them around. There you go. We're going to start right there. Yeah, that one, you can still feel it's wet. And if somebody wants to try it, go home. I brought a, uh, quite a few wet logs up here. You can take them home and play with them, and they're, they were all cut Saturday. Uh, Does that work at all? No. <laughs> uh, it tended to chip out worse. Okay. Uh, I don't know what kind of tree they used in Germany, but they were using a skew that they ground. It looked like a fish hook in it, and they were taking it and pulling it into it. I never could get it to work, though, so it, it must take a certain angle and everything. But the guy that showed me how to do it, that was what he did was, was this tool and it works really easy. So it's not too hard. Pardon? You mean, you want to pass it around? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. What, what do you want it, David? Huh? <laughs> as long as I get it back. <laughs> get the handle back. <laughs> get the handle back. <laughs> Well, the handle came from, I think it was Highland Woodwork, and they had them on sale back in the spring for $9.95, and that was pretty good, pretty good handle. I bought, I bought several of them. For the next thing, we had uh, our club Christmas two or three years ago. They wanted everybody to make angels for a table decoration. And I kept looking at all these pictures of angle, angels and... I just didn't see any that I liked. I couldn't find anything. I wanted something that was simple, easy to make, and would show off the wood, but look like an angel. And finally, I went to a Salvation, it was a Goodwill store, and I found this in there, which is it's a brass angel. I've, t I've taken the wings off because I had to make a copy, but I just liked the dimensions on it. Uh, the shape of it, and it was easy, and if you use a really pretty wood, it looks good. And uh, I've used mostly, I, I make the wings out of copper, and I put a halo on them, but you don't have to put a halo. At first, I was putting a halo with a wire, you know, a soldering a wire and then attaching it in, but then it would wiggle, and the wings are, uh oh he's changing the camera, okay, all right. But anyway, it's simple and it shows off the wood. It's pretty. It's pretty neat. You hold it horizontal, and I get it from the top. Okay. And I'll pass this around so you can look at it. You're not going to hurt it. I've probably made 50 of these. I guess I give them away for gifts for kids and teachers. My grandkids say, "Oh, I need something for my teacher for Christmas." Well, this is quick and easy to make. And I've made the wings out of copper, aluminum. Let's see, uh, plastic, and even a. Uh, folders like you, you get card folders you know it's a kind of a manila paper pretty stiff paper i've made about that i've made i've never made any bigger than this but i have made them like this tall and use cardboard wings and halo on them but they're they're really easy let's see and that i usually i like to use this is spalted pecan which works really good the only thing with spalted pecan is you have to figure out which is going to be the face because if you pick the wrong side for the face, you may get an angel that has goggles or a big <laughs> mouth or something like that, you know, something you don't want. I bought this Tommy Bar Chuck about two months ago because I had an older one that I liked. When I got this one home and took it out, you could barely even move it. It was so stiff. 
So I worked and worked on it and finally got loose. I finally had to end up putting some polishing powder like a jeweler uses down inside there and then work it and work it and work it. And now it's going to put, because you should be able to spin it with your fingers pretty easy. But uh, at home, I use the Tommy Bar Chuck with a, I will lock the, the lathe down and I can just use one hand with it, you know, to tighten it up. Because they say, oh, it's going to use two hands. Well, you don't. So what's our dimensions on this going to be? Mm. I made you, if somebody wants one, I made some copies. Let's see how you got it there. Copies of this. Oh, okay. Anyway, I put the dimensions on there, and uh, that's basically, but you could scale it up or scale it down however you want to. But I'll have to show you one thing you do need to do. Oh, there it is. When you get, I didn't bring a pen, did I? There's a marker over here. That'll work. A Sharpie ought to work. It'll put a line on there. Uh, you got your head, and then you got the bust, and then the dress the rest of the way. Okay. The thing about making an angel that you have to watch out for, you really don't want her to look like a Barbie doll, and you don't want her to look too fat. Let's see, where's it? Depends on your dimensions. Here, how you do this straight, if you kind of round it out too much, she, she doesn't look like an angel. If you push it in too much and then make her too busty, then she looks like a Barbie doll. But these dimensions here were just pretty good. I liked them. But let's see what speed have we got here. We've got that speed, whatever that is. So I just kind of make a line. And this is not, it's just something we'll work. That's a point tool. What do you, what do you call it? The point. point Triangular point. point that sounds good. <laughs> now I turn the head. I start at the head. Of course, I use some calipers at home to do this. For whoever's cleaning up, I'm sorry. I apologize for making a mess. Huh? <laughs> the janitor. Oh, okay. Now they take you. Off. And I think the chart says the head's about an inch, about an inch, inch and an eighth. Okay, we've got a head. I'm gonna put this I think this is supposed to be about about an inch and a half. Now see here's where you got you can make her look like a Barbie. You know, taper this down too much and she doesn't quite look right. Here, taking her and changing the angle of the dress. Changes. So let me show you. Let's make her look wrong. See, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look like an angel. To me, it doesn't. I don't know. Looks like the maid working in the house or something, but not an angel. That's, that's my interpretation of an angel. And I think she should look more like this, except taper a little bit more to her waist.
now it's about time to get out the 60 degree skew. I mean the 60 grit skew, you know. I'm just going to rough this in. See, that's looking more angel, except her head's a little too big. Maybe she just had a big head. No! Well, I guess you could. You can just put a straight halo on it, you know. Hmm? You put a head on it. Yeah, I, I cut the head off a little bit with one of these, uh, where'd it go? These kind of flex saws, real thin ones, and it takes out just enough wood and you can match the wood back up and glue it on with a copper washer or just a copper sheet you kind of shaped around. Of course, you're not supposed to do that either, right? But I do have my glasses on, so I'm doing something right. Like I've been trying to get our club to get uh, one of those dust monitors. You know, you can check, see how much dust you got in your shop. They sell them for about $260. I saw them in American Woodworking Magazine one time, a deal on it. And I was reading on Sawmill Creek about people had got it and everything. And I have a dust collection system. And I have a big squirrel cage uh, unit that came out of a house. And I put a filter behind it. And I have a box fan over here they use. And I thought my air was pretty good. But after reading the articles in American Woodworker, we had a doctor come and talk to us. Uh, it said that I should be using MERV-8 filters. So I looked at my filters, which I thought were pretty good, and they were MERV-5s. So I went to Lowe's and Home Depot. They didn't have any 8s, but they had 11s, and 11 costs twice as much as a 5 does. But it has more pleats, but it's supposed to catch all the, the little dust that you can't see. So I don't know if I'll get a... But anyway, I've changed them all up. I put... Uh, a dash five, and then I put a dash eight, on, a dash eleven on top of it. So I put two filters, so it doesn't. Wait a minute. I put the eleven and then the five on top of it. That's right. Did you get the better ones? If you can take them outside with your air compressor mm -hmm. and clean them up. You can get like easily eight or ten. I do it at yeah. my shop. Yeah. I got the eleven, and then I take them outside with the compressor and blow them off, and just like new. Well, sometimes you, uh, they sell a sticky spray that you can spray on there. But then it's not going to come off. <laughs> but it'll, it'll stop everything. Uh, an air conditioner guy told me that one time. He said, "Just he said, just go buy your cheap filters and uh, throw them away and use that spray." But but those those Dash 11s are not cheap. I'm going to say they're uh, ten or eleven dollars for a twenty by twenty, where the others are like four dollars or five dollars. You know, that's quite a bit of difference. Anyway, we're going to make our, let's see what kind of head we got here. I would have moved back a little bit so I could cut the top of her head off, though. That's where I would have done it. I didn't do it this time. Because it looks like she's got a flat top, not a head. What, you want me to put a halo on her right there? Well, I guess we could make her head a little bit smaller. I kind of liked it where I gave her a little bit of attitude, you know, with her, with her halo just a little bit off center. But you could you could do a halo like that. But uh, the one other thing you have to watch out for is now where are you gonna put her face? You know, you, you I don't think you want that to be her face. I don't probably, that one there, that one, which side should be right? <laughs>
This poor angel's just ugly any way you go. <laughs> I don't know. She must, she must not been one of the pretty ones, I guess. <laughs> She's got tattoos. There's definitely a tattoo. I think. I, anyway, if you whatever you decide for her face, you know, go to the other side, and then I go ahead and mark it, punch a hole in it to where I'm going to attach the wings. Because it's easier to do on here, or maybe even drill a pilot hole to put that wood screw than it is in your hand. You know, if you slip, you go like that. That hurts. But anyway, uh, any more questions on an angel? I'm going to stop here on that poor old angel. She's so ugly, I don't want to do any more to her. <laughs> Take that one off. <laughs> Take that one off. Uh, I don't know which teacher is going to get this one. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> Have y'all seen what Common Core is? Do y'all know what Common Core is? Huh? Oh, I'm raising a third grader. He's nine years old. I've had him since he was six weeks old. So I'm having to look at what Common Core is in school. Oh my gosh, the way they're teaching kids to do math now. Uh, it's unreal. He comes home and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen anything like that. And they give them tricky questions. That's the bad thing. You know, they don't... I won't go into that. <laughs> That's for another time. Oh, man. The janitor's going to have fun tonight. Okay, for next thing, how many people have done an inside-out ornament? Not everybody. I thought nearly everybody at least done one inside-out ornament. So, you know, most of you know what it is. Okay, I started to do an inside-out ornament for you, and it kind of morphed into something else. You know, it's one of those things you call it prototyping. You know what a prototype is. That's when you screw it up the first time and then you go on to prototype number two. Well, if you hadn't done it, inside out, you take four blocks of wood, tape it together, maybe put a little bit of wrapping tape around it, masking tape, and you turn a groove in it. You put it on there like this. Oh, I'm not going to do it, but you turn it. It also has another name, it's called therming. And therming has been around since the 1700s, so it's not anything new. It started off, that was the way that uh, builders used to do table legs. They would make a big drum to go on a lathe, and they'd put table legs on it, and they would cut that outside radius, flip it over, cut another outside radius, and flip it over till they had all four sides with a different radius on it, with a a large radius instead of a round. So when you get through with Thurman, you end up with something that looks like this. When you take it off, you take it apart, you've got just a nice smooth thing in there, and then you put it back together and you call it an inside out Christmas ornament, which will look something like this. I mean, this is just your basic one. But I was looking at that and I thought, could I do something different with it? I don't know. I thought I'd just play with it. So I thought, huh? I took some pieces and I did it like this. And you can see where I cut it out. That was prototype number two. <laughs> it didn't look very good. I didn't like it at all, the way it came out. The, the edges just didn't match up. So I thought, well... Why don't I just glue them to a stick? You know, glue the four pieces to a stick like this and then cut it out. This was prototype number three. But then I had to get it off the stick and it tore out on the back and I didn't like that either. It didn't work very good. So I did it again without gluing it on so much and I had my four pieces that I could make and I was looking at it and it was like you know why do I go to all this work to do that when if I put it like this 
Maybe I could just drill a hole. Prototype number four. So, here's prototype number four. <laughs> so, I have two pieces that have a hole drilled in them, and they're attached to one piece that has a hole drilled. Th this right here is one piece. See the different colors? Those are just glued on there. And I thought, well, that's better, but still just seems, I don't know, just didn't look right. I just didn't like it. So it was time for prototype number five. Number five, trying again. And same thing, I didn't make a long stick. You can see this is a solid piece through here, two pieces on. Now, at least I have a round circle in there that's pretty smooth, it was easy to make. But eh, I didn't like that one either. Prototype number six. <laughs> I decided to take these pieces and glue them on a, like this. Put it in between. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was going to, whoops. Good grief. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, we're to this point. What number are we on? Six? Six. six. six prototype number six. And I thought, well, I didn't want that block in there, so why don't I just cut that block out? Because, you know, when you do it inside out, you want to put something inside of it, you know, kind of make it a little bit neater or something a little bit different. And then, well, if I do that, maybe I could extend it down and make it longer on either end. You know, just cut this in half and move it. And, you know, when you do it inside out, if you do it like this, then you have to, put a hole to mount your finial, something like that. Well, why not just have it all in one piece? Do it all at one time with the with the block in there. So what number are we at? Seven, we're going to seven? Seven. So here's the first one I did. This was seven. And uh, this has the square block in the middle. The piece is on the edge. This one is not... Uh, it was actually done on those. But what I noticed about it was like, uh, if you've done segmenting, you know, you get different colors together. Well, it had this scallop to it. I said, oh, that looks kind of neat. Time for prototype number eight <laughs> before we get there. Here's prototype number eight. Almost finished, but it broke off up here when I was working on it. And you see, we get the scallop look on there. That's it. And we've got our finial that we can do. You know, it's all one piece. It doesn't, it's not something we have to do. It's going to be straight, and you can do it all at one time. And well, I broke this one. Well, you can see, this one does not look like that one. And it was getting too thin up here to work too much on this, so it broke off. But still, somebody's going to get it. One of those teachers I don't like. <laughs> so here was, what are we up to now? <laughs> nine? Okay, I lost count. Anyway, here's nine. Okay, now it's getting a little better. And I put something in the middle. Since I had those, I decided, well, before I glue it together, why don't I turn something on that'll go on the inside? So I put just a couple little cones in there to try it. But I really did like the way the scallop and the wood looks on that. I thought that was kind of, you know, we passed that. What's that, nine? That was nine. Okay, there was nine. That's what nine ended up. I thought it was kind of neat. Here was ten. <laughs> it's getting a little, a little better. And I just, uh, used some of the, this is with cedar and maple. And so I did a little better job on the uh, finials, but I still didn't make them too small because I'm not, what, Cindy Droza? I want to say Cindy Lopper, but I think I mean Cindy Droza, no? Yeah. Okay. Either one. Uh, either one, anyway. Because uh, they'll probably get handled some. But, and these here did not quite line up right because you got a lot of geometry work in there. If you get it a little bit off here, you've changed your angles. If you get the size of your block, not quite uh, 
more of a rectangle instead of a square, it's going to throw off your geometry. And this was uh, not quite the last one, but I put a smaller one inside the bigger one. Let's see, which way we got it? Like that? I'll hold it up. That way, okay. So there we go. So I put a smaller one inside. And, you know, it's getting there. That's getting pretty close. Anyway. And this is the last last version that I put a Christmas tree in it, and I haven't finished it yet. I was still working on it. But uh, when you get down to doing this last part, you get a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> you don't want to see it go ding off into the wall somewhere. <laughs> but let's see. I think this one is purple heart and maple. And I don't know what the Christmas tree is made out of. It's some wood laying around on my table saw. But the thing about it is you have to get that block square and you don't want to make it smaller than the thickness of these pieces. That block has to be either this size, let's see which way is he looking at, you know, this thickness or thicker. You can make it a little bit thicker, the square block, because that way it will, you can wiggle it around a little bit. Now, you got some questions on that? What we, what we get up to? 10, 11, something? 11? 12? <laughs> Some, somewhere in there anyway. <laughs> yes? Yes. So oh, let's see. Oh. oh. Yep. Ah. Uh, do I drill the holes in the board. Then I rip the board in half. And there I've got my four pieces. But at this you have to be careful too because you want these wall thicknesses to be the same. So that means you've got to have the center line to that wall be the same. So you, if you're going to Thin it down on your table saw. You don't want to do one this way and the other one the other way. You got to keep them the same. Because I do have one at home that has a bulge. <laughs> that would have been, I guess, 13. <laughs> that didn't quite work well. I said, got that one. Well, do y'all have some more questions? I don't have anything else to give you. Okay. Yeah. What well, the the good thing about the inside out? Let's see. Because the way they're shaped, that inner radius goes and meets the outer edge, so it can look like it's razor thin, even though that they may even be mismatched, they'll still look okay. But when you do that, where you've drilled the holes, you got to make your walls pretty much the same. Or, you know, unless somebody go. Only a wood turner is going to look at it and go, mm, let's see where you screwed up on this. You know, like they, you know, they, they're the ones that feel the inside of your va deep hollow vases, you know. <laughs> you know, they're going to say, oh, looky here, look at that. But for everybody else, they'll never notice it. <laughs> if you, unless you got it massively off, they're not going to notice that something went wrong. Anyway, any more questions? Yep. What's the living going to look like? The what? Eleven gonna look like. Oh no! <laughs> Depends on how much breaks. <laughs> you know, the finial might get shorter and shorter and shorter. But I, I didn't make it too much. Uh, one other thing, I'll show you that I did. If I can find it here. Okay. I don't know if you, I'm sure some of you do it, but all of you may not do it. Uh, when you get to doing a finial, and you end up with it out on the end. Let's pretend I got this still in the chuck. I put masking tape on it and I'll run this up into there. And then, then you've got a support for it. Or otherwise, you know, you, you got to just leave a little bit of wood. You just start doing the point, but uh, a piece of blue masking tape on that. And now you've got it supported. That adds a lot to the strength when you start turning up on the other end. Of course, you don't want to get this in too late because that's having to pull all the torque of your turning tool. 
So you know, you do the long end first and then work your way back. Like uh, that one that's partially around, you can see where I'm working my way up to the tip on it, the top tip. Any more questions? No? Yep. Oh, oh, okay. This is a uh, pen saver. Yeah, it's a pen saver. And then, then you can put your finial tip in that, and it helps support it. The only thing is, it doesn't knock out. <laughs> you got to unwind it to knock it out and get that hole in the end of it. Any more questions? No? No? Okay. I'm, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Now you'll all go home and say, God, why didn't I ask that question? <laughs> Got one more question. Where did that thing go? There it is. Oops. Okay, you should have seen how stiff this was when I first got it. Oh, man. What make is it? Huh? What make is that? It's a Nova. Wow. Yeah, Nova's a good chuck. But, but see, now you can spin it. I couldn't turn it by hand at all when I first got it. You, I had to work. Up, I thought... What would you end up doing to it? Hmm? What would you end up doing to it? Uh, well, I just worked it a lot, but I ended up putting some polishing powder the jewelers use. It's a, a rouge, the red powder. I sprinkled it in there, but then after a while, after I took it apart, you could see there was just barely the edges of a couple of the gears in there. It wasn't even very much that it was rubbing on, but it was enough to make it, you couldn't turn it with your fingers. Okay.